let's focus on HIV and AIDS. And we all know someone who has been infected or affected by HIV and AIDS, and that is why the war against uh, stigmatization should be fought by all of us. Now to that story of the 12-year-old boy who may have become the latest victim of stigma against those living with HIV. Elijah Zachary Lemayan was first introduced to the country after he gave a rousing speech at the United Nations General Assembly then earned him a standing ovation. But now a high-ranking school in Kajiado has refused to admit Elijah after learning of his HIV status. KTN's Betty Okari has been investigating the saga for the last one month and here now is her report stigma academy it is friday 2 p.m at this time in many schools around the country Pupils are settling in for the afternoon session. First term has just begun. However, for Elijah Lemayan, an energetic, intelligent and charismatic boy, things are different. Yes, he should be in school, jostling through mathematics or English or social studies books, but that's not the case. Elijah bravely came out last year and revealed his HIV status, which happens to be positive. It was a historic revelation that made him stand in front of world leaders speaking passionately against stigma. What really bothers me is stigma and discrimination. But it may seem that that daring disclosure made him come so close to discrimination. So we moved to um, this place a while back last year and um, but elijah by then was in boarding school still at where he was before in yawai academy and then um we opted that he just finishes he completes the year then now we um we can fully relocate plus even schools um here in matasia so then we went looking we went school hunting for a school uh, Naramat Academy was referred to us by my cousin. He told us it's one of the best schools in Matasia. We're looking for a school that performs well academically. And even when we went there and we saw for ourselves how the children perform, top scorers, the schools they go to, we just felt that was the right place. Elijah was ecstatic about his new school, saying that it was the school of his dreams and he would work hard to be the best student. What is it that you saw and loved about that school? You know, I've never been to a school which has up and downstairs. So that's the first thing which I liked about it. About it. And the second thing is, the, uh, once you're just getting, you're just going to, you're seeing the map of Kenya. And that's where you can even learn more things. That's, and the third thing, I saw the class eights, the marks they were getting. That's the other thing which I liked about that school. This is the school, Naramat Academy in Matasia, Kajiado County, a school that prides itself as a performer when it comes to national examinations. Uh, when we went for the interview, Elijah went in the morning for the interview and um, by around one o'clock he was done and I went to pick him up and uh, we went to speak to the head teacher who told us that um, he didn't perform very well. He had 299 marks and um, the only option would be that he repeats. And Elijah himself spoke out and said, in fact, that's what I want because I've seen the academic level in this place is quite high. But then what happened in the run up to now, January, when now you're expecting that he's actually going to join the school? So the head teacher told us that he had to repeat and we agreed to eat and he even gave us a school fee structure and uh, uniform requirements that uh, uniform the, the requirements form. With the interview out of the way, the fee structure and school requirements documents in hand, it was just a matter of time before Elijah would begin classes at Naramat Academy. That is the time we took the opportunity to disclose our status and I just told him it's, I think it's best because Elijah is public about his status so he always appears on media here and there. 
So, and I thought it wouldn't be fair if I put him in a school. In fact, we thought this is something we had discussed with Elijah before deciding to tell the head teacher. And we thought it wouldn't be fair if he's already in the school. Then all of a sudden, schoolmates or teachers start seeing him on TV and they go like, but this child is in our school. Well, that innocent revelation to the head teacher of the school may have triggered the series of tribulations that would follow. Come January, um, I had misplaced the fee structure, so I asked them to email me again urgently. I think they had not known, or I don't know if they knew it was me, my Elijah, so they emailed me the fee structure, and I went ahead and started the window shopping and planning myself, and I called again for the account um, for the school where I can pay the fees, and then um, he he, he even in the conversation you know he, he started by telling me oh why is he so late you know you should have been here and so many things then finally he asked me but they remind me the name of the child and i told him elijah emmanuel john zachary is what he came as and oh mama elijah in fact uh, if you don't mind please come let's have a small meeting first tomorrow morning let's have a small talk i said okay no problem Evelyn tells us that after she was called in for the meeting, she already felt something was amiss. It is this next call from the head teacher that proved her instincts were right. Now class six, class six, class six is packed completely. Oh. In class six, class seven, all those classes, class uh, four and five, those classes are full. And now you see, the, uh, maybe the most unfortunate part is that we did the interview. Uh, and we agreed that uh, he's going to be joining. Uh, and I have really been preparing myself and I've really done the budget according to Naramot. I even asked for uh, the budget this very year and he gave it to uh, many people. So uh, it, it, it's going to be a bit, it's not, it's almost not fair. Uh, quite a number, the number of admissions have been uh, done in the course of uh, last week and, uh, and partly yesterday. Uh, so, so quite a number of classes we have closed down. Class, class, classes uh, four, five, yeah. six. Those classes are completely packed. Uh, those classes are completely packed, Professor. Uh, so nothing, absolutely nothing, can be done. You can't just be squeezed in at all. Well, uh, unless now in second mm. time. Mm. Yeah, unless in second term, because in second term, uh, maybe there is one or two who uh, are transferring to other places or because of job, parents are moving. Oh. So that's when another vacancy probably can be created. From that conversation, it was clear that Elijah will not join the school as he and his mom had hoped. When we started window shopping, because we did it in December 9th, now we started window shopping... January, the first week, we started window shopping for the, for the school. The school uniform, the, the, yeah, those. And then after we are finished window shopping, just the, on the second week when we were, when I was ready to get into the school, and yet again he refused. What followed is what raises questions if indeed Elijah was discriminated against because of his HIV status. After Elijah's mom informed KTN News about the happenings at Naramat, we decided to investigate. I personally called the head teacher, posing as a parent in need of the same class Elijah would have joined. The response from the head teacher was shocking. Hello, Mr. Odero. Hello. Hello, Mr. Odero. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you doing? Yes. Yes, my name is uh, Angela Mweni. Yes, Angela. And uh, I have a child who I would have uh, wanted to uh, join class 6. I don't know if you have uh, vacancies at Naramat. In class? Class 6. In class 6? Yes. Well, we, we, are, we are doing the uh, census today, yeah? Uh-huh. Then we'll be able to establish this. Are you able to come to school? Um, today might be a bit tricky for me because mm. I'm at work, but um, can I call you later after you finish the, the census? Yes, sure. uh, what time uh, can I give you a call? Uh, by 
by by two. Oh, by two o'clock. Yes. So at least, um, okay. When you look at your numbers, do you think I can uh, get a space uh, because we've been really looking? Yeah, most likely. Okay, so we might just get a space, sir. Huh? Yeah, sure. Okay, fine then. I will give you a call at uh, two o'clock. You said. Yeah, yeah, two o'clock is okay. Okay, fine. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello, Mr. Odero. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, we spoke uh, earlier on. I was supposed to call you at two o'clock um, in regard to the vacancy for my boy in class six. Oh, your boy in class six. Now, uh, I think what what you need to do mm-hmm. just uh, bring the child to see the interview. Okay. Three days after that phone conversation, we were able to get a pupil who would pose as a child in need of a vacancy in class six. We took him for the interview, the same one that Elijah had sat for a month before. After our boy sat the exam, his results were out the same day, and his parents were given the fee structure, school requirement documents, and asked to report in two days. Elijah's mom tells us that even on the day that our undercover student was sitting for the interview, she made another plea to the school head teacher, informing him that Elijah was still at home and was losing out on school. That plea fell on deaf ears. After we took our student to to do the interview and they were actually admitted in the, into the school, you actually made a second phone call. After you also real, got the information that there were three other vacancies. Tell us how that went. After after KTN sent a student to go and uh, do the interview as well and was accepted, and I called the parent of that student who told me, in fact, they were told there's three vacancies. Again, I called the school <laughs> just to check maybe, maybe there's an opening after all. And so I just told the teacher, you know, I have gone round, I've looked for a similar school, I just can't find, and my son really loved that school. And the teacher still said, oh, I'm so sorry, unfortunately, there's absolutely no vacancy. So it was really clear that it's our status that is not wanted in there. Hello. Hello, morning. Morning to you. Mr. Odor. Yes. This is Mama Elijah. Yes, Mama Elijah. Well, I've gone round looking for a school that is at least cl- close to Narama. Because mm-hmm. the lady had really liked Narama. Mm-hmm. He party. Kuna kana fasi kame patika na bado kuna tu amehama. Ah, imagine bado. Yeah. Bado, maybe until the end of the term. I don't know if it's going to happen. Until that, by that time, he'll have missed too much in school. Yeah, by that time, he have really missed it. It is not good for him. So there is absolutely no vacancy at all still? Yeah, at the moment, no. On reaching the school administration, the head teacher denied the discrimination allegations. How, how did this child lose a vacancy? If the child lost the vacancy because the child was not brought for admission on the said date, and there were also parents who were scrambling for those few vacancies that were there. Mm-hmm. And you know, you know, you know, you know, it is a first come, first uh, uh, served basis. I questioned him on why we as KTN News managed to secure admission for another child even after the school had refused to admit Elijah. We were able to admit another student two weeks after she was told there's still no space. We brought in a fresh student um, called Ndongo. He came here with um, the parents mm-hmm. and was able to sit for an examination mm-hmm. after she was told mm-hmm. there is no space. Mm-hmm. So that was the problem. No, no, you know, what she's telling you is not true. What she's telling you that uh, there was another parent who came and sat for the interview. No, no, we, we, this we, we, brought her, we, we brought our own students. As Kate said, when we got the, the story, yeah. we wanted to dig deeper and see if it's true. So we actually brought in a student yeah. and um, he came here and sat for the examinations yeah. Yeah. and was actually admitted for the same class, for the same class. You know, you know, on the other hand, let us understand that uh, private schools, they, the higher the number of pupils you have, the better. So, so you cannot just uh, wake up one time and throw a child out. Elijah is not new to being the limelight. 
Last year, on several occasions, he spoke to mass audiences about his passion for ending stigma. His speech during the United Nations General Assembly in September last year brought world leaders to their feet. If the cure will not be there yet, at least I shall be taking my ARV medication every day on time. This is my mother. She has been my mentor since I was born. She's the one whom I love so dearly. She disclosed to me my status when I was six years old, early enough to understand. I told her, Mom, it's okay, and the Lord is with us. What really bothers me is stigma and discrimination. We need to, to stop stigma. And now please allow me to read my conclusion so that I don't miss any point. <laughs> we are children, we have rights, and we have a future. My dream is that by the time I am 27 years old, there shall be no more stigma, and I shall be pursuing my doctorate or master's as a scientist. On many instances where an opportunity arises, Elijah is never shy to disclose his status and speak against discrimination and stigma. I was very, very heartbroken. Um, we, in our lives, Elijah and I, we really campaign against stigma. We trample, we walk over stigma all over. No matter how it's brought upon us, we always find a way to fight it back. But this time round, I actually sat down, I was shaking and I was confused. I couldn't believe it finally happened to me as a parent of a child living with HIV that my son, public as he is about his status, advocative as he is, is being denied a chance in school. It really took me aback. I also got, felt really hurt and I imagined how many other parents go through this. Does living with HIV mean that you cannot go to school? Does living with HIV mean that you cannot perform well? Does living with HIV mean that you, that you cannot learn? Does living with HIV mean that when you go to school, you are going to spread the virus to everybody? If yes, how? This stigma has to stop. <laughs> Elijah's experience is just one in thousands where people living with HIV and AIDS, including children like him, are denied opportunities. I, I, would, I would say that there are many, many cases still... We spoke to Nelson Otwoma from the National Empowerment Network of People Living with HIV and AIDS. So this is something that uh, is a pointer to what is happening in the learning institutions. And this is something that has been identified. We work to address stigma in young people living with HIV, but the main culprit remain learning institutions, whether it is primary, secondary, or universities. And this is part of, if you remember Elijah spe uh, stepping on the scene in front of the president, he was talking about stigma that happened in school. In 2006, the HIV tribunal was formed. The tribunal is a court whose core business is to settle cases that border discrimination in workplaces, schools, among others. We will be consulting widely because we've investigated and we confirm indeed the child was discriminated. This is a case that even the HIV equity tribunal need to pick up. Now there are 1.6 million people living with HIV and AIDS in the country. Among those, 250,000 are children. And with Elijah's experience, you can imagine how many more children have opportunities snatched away from them or denied opportunities in learning institutions because of their HIV status. It is the hope of vocal children like Elijah that people's attitudes, especially towards children living with HIV and AIDS, will change positively. Not to discriminate us children living positively because we are all normal people. We are equal to the eyes of God. It doesn't mean that... It, you know, people take it as, like, uh, let's say I am a wolf and them they are human. We are, I'm not a wolf. I am, I am just this, as, the same as they are. So they should not discriminate us. 
Betty Okari, KTN News.